this is a boat sailing somewhere and this started as a sail but now as a cat. The meaning of pareidolia is seeing something familiar in a random image. It would be like looking up at the sky, at the clouds in the sky, and saying, oh, a sailboat, a dragon. And you might see a dragon, and somebody else might see it as a fluffy sheep. So it's, it's a very personal experience. In my artwork, I do a lot of random and just accidental things to a canvas or a board that I'm working on. And at some point, I want to start bringing out form and figuring out what the painting will be about. And sometimes I'll put something into the painting, and sometimes I'll see something that's sort of starting to exist in those random images and bring those out. This is a cat. It emerged during the painting process as did this cat, which started out as a blob, but now as a cat. There are two figures down here. It was one figure, but he looked lonely, so I put in another figure. And there's a very small dog here. I think it's a dog. It might be a woodpecker. I'd been using this concept or this way of painting for a long time before I found the word pareidolia. And I, it was so wonderful because I thought, oh, there's actually a word for what I'm doing. And it was because my friend Ruth Armitage, who's an artist in Portland, someone wrote an article about her around this concept. And she put it in her newsletter and I thought, pareidolia, huh? The only thing I saw jumping out at me on this one is a chicken. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is the chicken's head and it's curving back around. And I'm gonna actually try to bring this chicken out, and I don't know if it's gonna work, but it'll be interesting to try. This technique, if you wanna call it that, can be used at all stages of a painting. Usually I start paintings by just doing random stuff. I create a colorful ground and that includes putting paint on in a variety of ways, scribbling into the ground, and I just let things start to show up. I start to cover things up and bring other things out. That's what creates the random form. As I have done that, I start to get back and really look at things. I get rid of colors I don't like, shapes I don't like. I start saying yes and no to things. And at some point, I may see something that looks like a form that I might want to bring out. So this painting's been sitting around in my studio, honestly, for a few years. It got to this stage and it was just like, meh, 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 meh. but when I was looking for ones to use in the film, I found it, I looked at it, and I thought, aha, a cat. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's there's even a couple ears right there. And there's a tail, and the tail, I might like the tail like that, or I might change where the tail goes, but this is gonna be a cat. That is part of my voice. It's what I choose and what I unchoose. So if I start seeing something like some of the iconic images that I use, for example, I paint a lot of chickens, I paint cats, I paint laundry lines, I paint houses, trees. I might bring out something that looked like a chicken, or if I saw something that looked like a brontosaurus, I might change it into a chicken. It's happened in the past. I once turned a horse into a chicken. As I move on in the painting, I may have brought out some shapes 
a variety of shapes within the painting. One of the ways that I've gotten hung up is that sometimes I've seen just a bunch of little shapes. And the challenge with this is that you can end up with a bunch of little stuff, but there's no sense of how it all works together. I do use pareidolia, I do use discovering things within the form that I've created, but I also use something I call imposing, which is to say, I want a very big chicken right here. And that chicken starts to define what I'm going to do with the painting as a whole. It may even encompass some of the smaller forms that I find, Another thing I may do instead of imposing a chicken shape is to look for a larger shape in terms of pareidolia. Instead of looking like, oh, here's a teeny little chicken in the corner, I may really look for something that, that I could develop as a larger image. I reground periodically as I paint. So I may have done an initial, you know, painting and putting some collage elements on and all kinds of things like that. Then I'll start bringing form out and, you know, sort of playing around with where this painting may go. And then at some point I may put on more collage elements. I scratch things back, I sand back and just do all kinds of things that are often quite random at every stage of painting. I don't start a painting and say it has to go here. In fact, I often don't know where a painting is going to go when I start. But as it goes along, I can change things. I can totally change my direction. In the painting by the bay, there was a strange shape up near the top of the painting, and it had a birdness to it. So I started painting and it turned into my two-headed bird, which I absolutely love. Now, how do you know when a bird wants to have two heads? I have a real fascination with two-headed creatures because I wonder how they'll get along. And it's clear to me when you look at this bird that they are not getting along. In my painting, at the heart of it, there is a small pig down in the, the lower half of the painting. And that guy just showed up, not completely, but he was quite pig-like when I saw him. And that may be my favorite part of the painting. So this can be a really lovely experience to see things in the painting and then bring them more to life. After I see something or the glimmer of something, then I have to refine it. For example, I've seen plenty of one-eared cats that I really wanted to have a second ear, so I would paint that ear on. I've seen cat shapes that don't have tails and I wanted a tail, so I paint a tail on. One thing to consider is not to over-explain in your paintings. I like to leave ambiguity. I like having things that are sort of there and sort of hidden. I love it that this is me expressing myself, but the person who will look at the painting can experience it from where they are, from who they are. In my studio is a bathroom, which is very nice to have. And 
the walls had tile on them, which was removed, and, and it's left these really strange forms all over the bathroom wall. So sometimes I just sit and look at them. And I actually, one day I got a piece of chalk and, and started completing some of the forms that I saw. Kurt Cobain said, I write half the song. I love that quote because to me that's what we do as artists. We create something, but the viewer encounters that and makes of it what they will. So here's what you need to do. You need to go and lie on the grassy field and look at the clouds and start noticing stuff. I think most of us have looked up at clouds and said, sheep or brontosaurus chasing a fish, whatever it is. And there's a playfulness about that. There's a, an excitement that can come from seeing something a shape, a form, in just a random thing. So as you start playing with this idea in your work, I hope that there's a sense of playfulness and experimentation, because those are qualities that I think really help us to find our way and create something that's unique and personal. The only way I could describe it is a pig bat. This is the chicken's head. This, to me, because it has feet, could be a, a human figure, it might want a head. And this pig bat has, well, it seems like it has three legs, actually. There's the beak. Kind of a sad, tired, wintry tree, a weird chicken. I thought it was kind of boring. And this chicken would be kind of rolling, folding back on itself. But I had the thought that maybe these guys are dancing together. So now what am I going to do? Guy in a boat, could be a woman in a boat, could be a non-gendered person in a boat. Aha! A cat. Early days yet on this, on this painting. <laughs> I want that footprint. But I do see a very stuck-up kangaroo coming in from the side. I don't know if it's gonna work, but it'll be interesting to try. <laughs>